useless orphan disgusting boy awakens a S-rank spirit that turns music into the strongest power. In the year 2020, a meteor shower of black stones covered the sky, landing on Earth. Monsters known as D2 came out of those meteors and attacked humanity. Humans tried to fight back, however, nothing could defeat the monsters. Until one day, some people awaken the mysterious power to fight back using the power of music called conductors and the music hearts. Every music heart power comes from music compositions, but their power can only be used when they're contracted to a conductor, who uses their life force to unlock the music heart's full power. Tact is a young boy who always admired how hard his father worked. His father, Kenji, is a music composer who always cared about who would listen to the music he made. Tact was so proud of his father that he also learned how to play the piano hoping that someday, the two would be able to perform together. However, one day his father was performing, when it was attacked by the D2. Tact cried as he tried to wake his father up, but his father never got up. Everyone mourned for Kenji's death, except him, who tried to deal with his emotions by playing the piano. Sagan, the leader of the New York Symphonica, the group that fights the monsters gave a speech on Kenji's memory. He quoted the maestro, who always said that music provides people comfort and hope. Sagan then explained a secret to the public. Music has the power to defeat the monsters when used by conductors. However, it can also attract monsters when it's played by civilians. And from that day forward, music was banned from being played by regular people. Ten years have passed since that day, and Tact has spent every day isolated in his soundproof garage. He practiced the piano there with no end. Luckily, he had some cute neighbors, Cosette and Anna, who would visit him once a week to make sure he ate and cleaned the house. However, dealing with Cosette was annoying for Tact. As soon as she arrived, he would tell her to leave. But she always ignored him and started cleaning, which annoyed Tact because he couldn't play with the noise. They began to argue, but Anne, as always, stepped in and scolded them. They went to have breakfast, and Cosette suggested to Tact that he should play the piano outside. She wanted people to hear his music because she believed it would make everyone happy. However, he refused because there were no pianos left outside. Anna then tells Tack that her family promised to take care of him after his father passed away. Yet, she explains that one day she and Cosette would leave for New York, leaving him alone. She was worried because Tact hadn't left the house since his father died. He said he would never leave and would just protect his music. In the afternoon, he was playing the piano, imagining that his father was the conductor. He played it with all his passion, but Cosette came in, interrupting him. She told him that there would be a Symphonica festival, and it was his chance to play the piano. It was a day where everyone could let loose and be happy again. However, he refused once again, stating that people had abandoned music. Plus, he doesn't believe that he is good enough for his music to reach everyone's hearts, just like his father believed. Besides, only Anna and Cosette had ever heard him play. Cosette became sad, and before leaving, she said she liked his music. The next day, Cosette began playing the piano when Tact wasn't around. Suddenly, he arrived and was surprised because he didn't know she could play the piano. She said her late mother taught her. She told him that at the festival, only music prepared by Symphonica was allowed to be played, which seemed unfair. She asked him to make a shocking street debut, but he refused once again. Anna came into the room to take out the trash, and she told him that the only person who could make Cosette smile was him, even though he considered her a nuisance. The following day, Tact realized that Cosette had taken his piano to the festival without his permission. People started arriving, but Tact hadn't come yet. Cosette decided to stall for time and began playing while Anna went to look for him. After a few minutes, Tact arrived and started playing the piano. He wanted to show people what real music was. Everyone was amazed by the beautiful music. Then Cosette decided to join, and they played together. They seemed happy and full of life while playing. After performing, Cosette happily grabbed and raised his hand to thank the audience. Suddenly, an explosion occurred where they were, and various D2 creatures appeared in different parts of the city. Tact later regained consciousness and noticed his right arm was injured with several rocks pierced. He feels heavy and looks down. He notices Cosette severely injured from the explosion and tries to wake her up. She opened her eyes and told him she was right. She tells him that she loves the way he plays the piano. She then closes her eyes and he realizes those were her last words. Anna arrives and is shocked to see her younger sister in that state. Tack starts to cry, pleading for her to open her eyes. At that moment, Cosette's necklace started glowing. She starts floating and a rose appears from her chest, releasing some thorn vines that restrain Tact's arm. Tack then looks down and sees some sort of spirit. The spirit approaches him and bites his arm off. Suddenly, the thorns and rose return to Cosette's body and she transforms into a new form. 
Anna cannot believe her eyes, but Cosette calls Tact Maestro. He's shocked by her new appearance. Cosette then summons a baton from her chest and hands it to him. Tact grabs it, confused, but Cosette reveals she can feel monsters nearby and asks permission to eliminate them. He cannot bear to look her in the eyes, but his face turns into anger as he orders her to delete them all. Anna couldn't believe her eyes as she saw her transformed sister walking toward the battlefield with Tact. Tact raised his baton, creating several bullets that hit the monsters. Cosette then followed up and began eliminating all the monsters that had appeared in her way. Tact directed her moves with the baton, while Cosette used her magic weapon and speed to defeat the monsters. Some monsters focused on Tact, but he managed to dodge away. Cosette came to his side, and he ordered her to eliminate them all. She powers up a magic attack that ends up consuming a huge part of his life force. She shoots an energy ball from her weapon, creating a huge blast to defeat the monsters. Tact gets angry because the monsters were annihilated without making a single noise. He then notices Cosette falling forward. He approaches her body and his arm regenerates. Suddenly, more monsters appear and he also faints. Suddenly, a man named Lenny and a girl named Titan arrive on a motorbike. The girl quickly steps into action and starts defeating all the monsters. However, at the same time, we can see someone on top of a building, destroying a playing tuning fork. The next day, Tact woke up from a dream where he saw Cosette walking away after listening to him playing the piano. He then looked at his injured hand and noticed some black spots. He went down to his garage and found Cosette. However, there's something strange. Her eyes are wide open, and her voice is monotone. He called her name, but she replied that Anna also called her by that name. But her real name was Destiny. He is confused, but she repeats while calling him Maestro. Tack tries to take it slow, mentioning a lot happened the previous night, and that some weird stuff happened to the two of them. Destiny then explained that she was born from Beethoven's fifth symphony called Destiny. She reveals that she is a music art and tact as a conductor. Still confused, he talked to Anna about what was wrong with Cosette. She introduced him to Lenny and Titan, explaining that they had saved him the day before, and they started eating. Lenny explained that when the meteorites called the Black Knight Ceterite fell, the D2 creatures appeared and couldn't be defeated. Even advanced technology didn't stand a chance against them until the music arts were created by Symphonica. Their power originated from the Harmony Mineral, which had energy opposite to the D2 creatures and reacted to music. With this newfound power, they were able to drive the D2OS into dormancy and end the battle. That's what brought on the Sagan Declaration. Tact asked Lenny why Cosette was acting strangely, almost robotic. Lenny told him that they were unsure how the D2OS arrived at the scene. Lenny said that a music art transformation usually involves a long process in labs when they show potential but he didn't understand why Cosette became one naturally. He explained that it's not a normal occurrence and that those who become music arts lose their memories. Anna was worried as they would have to fight D2 creatures, but Lenny told her that she's no longer Cosette. He explained that those who become music arts lose themselves and their memories. Titan had a similar experience. Tact understood that if Cosette hadn't transformed, she would have died that day. Upon hearing this, Anna was shocked and started crying. Lenny told them that Music Heart's powers can be used in a stable manner, but Destiny was out of her armored mode and currently in her sleep mode. This mode was inconceivable, and there was something wrong with her ability to control her energy output. Later that day, Anna and Tact planned to go to New York as they could investigate what was happening to Cosette there in the Symphonica headquarters. Anna's sister and parents lived there as well. However, getting there was complicated and dangerous as they had to pass through areas with many D2 creatures. Lenny provided advice on areas with less D2 activity. Anna asked Lenny if Cosette could be cured in New York. He replied that he wasn't entirely sure, but there was a possibility. He mentioned that he didn't plan to go to New York but could accompany them for a significant part of the journey. Tact expressed gratitude for what Lenny was doing and Lenny left to pack his things. Anna told Tack that she hoped Cosette could be cured and returned to her previous self since she currently acted emotionless. Anne said that Cosette became a music art because she was protecting him. Suddenly, Tack's arm disappeared and Cosette transformed, flying off at high speed. Tact went to find her. Lenny arrived and told Anna that music arts could sense D2 creatures from a long distance, so Destiny likely went to defeat them. Lenny and Titan also went after them. Tack found Cosette fighting a D2 creature. He questioned what she was doing, and she responded that her duty was to eliminate the D2 creatures. She handed Tack his baton, and Destiny used her weapon to eliminate the D2 creatures, but more kept arriving. Lenny and Titan showed up to help. Lenny noticed that Tact was in bad shape and asked what was wrong. Tact felt like he was drowning, experiencing intense pain. 
Lenny saw Destiny absorbing tact and remarked that regular music arts don't do this, but she isn't normal. Apparently, for Destiny to fight, she devours Tack's life energy. Titan eliminated the remaining DWoS, but Destiny wanted to join her. Her aimless shots caused the D2 creature to escape. As Anna was waiting for them to return, the last D2 appeared. Destiny asked if it was alright for the house to be part of the casualty, and he gave her permission to eliminate the danger. After Destiny blasted the last D2, the house was rubble. The following day, they set off for New York with Lenny and Titan. Along the way, they defeated some D2 creatures but struggled with Tact being severely affected after each battle. Lenny advised Tact to listen to Destiny's music and harmonize it with his own to fight in sync. The conductors served music, guiding the tones known as music hearts and turning them into melodies that they wanted. A man named Jonathan arrived in a car, recognizing Lenny. He took them to Las Vegas, now transformed into crop fields after the D2 creatures destroyed the casinos and hotels. Jonathan then introduced Lenny and Titan to his girlfriend, and they all laughed when Lang, accompanied by bodyguards, questioned their presence. Lang was the owner of the farm. Lang was delighted when he found out that Lenny was a conductor, and he thanked Symphonica for helping them out. Lenny said they had come to visit acquaintances. Lang told them that if they needed anything, they should ask him. During dinner at Jonathan's place, he told Anna and the others that Lenny had saved them from DWoS in their town. In the night, Tact and Lenny talked about how the people from this community didn't know about the DWoS earlier. Lenny told him that it was better that way as they would fall into chaos again. He then explained the importance of music and Symphonica's mission to protect the music. Tact then went to bed while Lenny went to Lang and gave him a huge sum of money. Tact was lying in his bed when Cosette sensed vibrations in Tact's room, feeling unsure if it's a D2, so she investigated. She discovered an abandoned-looking building with a warning not to enter, but they went in anyway. As they maneuvered, they spotted people inside. Cosette entered while Anna stopped her. The guards tried to stop her, but she easily defeated them. Titan and Lenny were already inside, finding a modern casino. Lang told them that the facility was open to a select few customers, including regulars from Symphonica. Tact and the girls managed to infiltrate, and Cosette was still trying to listen to the vibrations. But they were discovered, leading to a chase by guards. They were surrounded, but several D2 creatures emerged, prompting Cosette's transformation. Lenny and Titan arrived planning to use the D2 creatures for practice to fight in synchronization during their journey to New York. Lenny gave them advice on how to shoot within a few shots. Using the techniques, they defeated the D2 creatures, displaying beautiful harmony. Titan stopped Lang from taking the money, which belonged to the field workers. The next day, they were about to leave, and Lenny bid them farewell, having other plans. Before leaving, Lenny told Tak to become the light that shines on everyone, just like his father said. This surprised Tact, and he thanked Lenny for teaching him to fight with Destiny, and they departed. In another scene, a man informed a commander named Felix about Tact and Cosette, mentioning they were not registered in any database as a conductor or music art. He intended to alert Sagan, but Felix stopped him, saying he'd handle the problem himself. The group changed a tire on the highway, while Anna got tired and asked Tact to continue changing the tire, but he did not know how to. Cosette made fun of him by saying he had no other talent than music. Tack got frustrated, but she suddenly spotted a D2. Cosette transformed, swiftly flying, shooting, and defeating a D2 creature. A train arrived, and Wakyur, another music art, confronted Cosette. Why did Cosette stop the train was the question asked by her. Felix, with his music art named Hell, appeared. He recognized Tact and Cosette from pictures and offered to take them to their destiny on the train, to which they agreed and boarded. Felix told them that they were transporting Black Knight Ceterite to a Symphonica facility. Walker was on edge, but Felix told her to tell them the truth as they were already on board. Felix realized that Cosette was not an ordinary music art. He introduced himself as a commander and questioned how Tact acquired such a rare music art, as these weapons are not easily obtained. Anna was upset when Felix referred to Cosette as a weapon. But Felix continued, explaining that they are created to combat the D2 creatures. Tact refused to answer how he acquired Cosette as a music art, and then Felix sent Walker to take them to their rooms to rest. Walker expressed her distrust and warned them not to interfere with their missions. Tact didn't understand, but Cosette sensed many D2 creatures and transformed, climbing onto the train to fight. 
walk your initially objected but joined the fight alongside Cosette upon seeing the D2 creatures. Tact asked why Hell wasn't helping eliminate the D2 creatures, and walk your explained that Hell wouldn't act until she sensed the commander was in danger. walk your was enough to eliminate all the danger. A D2 creature appeared behind Tact, but Cosette easily eliminated it with her weapon. They defeated all the D2 creatures, but the train needed to stop because Cosette destroyed the tracks, and they needed repair. Walker scolded them for not heeding her warning and then left. Hell began laughing because they got yelled at and suggested to Tact how to befriend Walker. Tact declined, but Hell approached, insisting that he forcefully make Walker his. As she was without a conductor, she needed one. Although she looked stern from the outside, she was pure inside. Tact dismissed the idea. Hell then turned to Cosette, complimenting her eyes and said she needed an accessory of the same color, but Cosette stopped her. Hell then said she liked them before departing. Felix, on the other hand, asked Anna about everything, and she told him. He told her she was acting like she was keeping them under surveillance, which confused her. In the evening, numerous D2 creatures approached, and Walker was in shock as the Black Knight Siderite was sealed off properly. Tact prepared to conduct, and Cosette transformed to fight with Walker's help but they started to lose their powers as their strengths drained. Music hearts without any conductor used up their power much faster. Tack looked in the sky and saw another horde of Deet Woes approaching. He told Cosette to shoot where he told her to, but he was low on energy and missed all shots. Walker stepped in to save him from an attacking D2, but with the last two shots, everything came together. He was aiming at the mountain to weaken it so it collapsed on the flying Deet Woes. Walker thanked Tack. Acknowledging that without him and Cosette, they wouldn't have defeated the creatures alone. Tact thanked her, using Walker's name, which made her nervous. Suddenly, a giant D2 creature appeared, and Tact and Walker, exhausted, couldn't continue fighting. Hell asked Felix for permission to fight, which he granted. Hell transformed, quickly approached the D2 creature, and with just two kicks, eliminated it. Tact was surprised by Hell's strength. Felix discharged Walker as he did not need her anymore. They arrived in the city, and Felix spoke to Tact, praising his skills and inviting him to work for him, offering a high position due to his prowess in combat. Tact declined, in a hurry to get to New York, and left in his car, leaving Felix very upset. Felix promised to never forget his name. After several days, the group stopped in a city to buy supplies for their journey. It was a ghost town, and Anna commented that as they moved closer to the east coast, they would find more deserted towns. In the car, Cosette joked, surprising tact as she was supposed to act robotic. Cosette told him that it was because she was growing every day. They started to argue like before, and Anna made them be quiet. Tact remained in the car while Anna and Cosette went shopping. In the store, an old man worked and told the girls that this town mostly had old folks. As he was gathering their supplies, he got a backache and could not move. So, the girls tried to help him out. This way, they started to mend people's problems. Tack dreamed of the day his father died, witnessing two silhouettes of people who eliminated the D2 attacking him and his father. He woke and went searching for the girls as it had been a while but entered a bar upon hearing music. He went around the cassettes and found his father's music. The bartender said he picked a fine music and put it. Tact was surprised to see that people admired his father, revealing they heard him play. Tact then revealed that Ken was his father. They all were shocked. As the girls finished running some errands and were crossing the street, an old woman approached and called Anna Maria, dragging her to her house, thinking she was her daughter. Even though Anna tried to tell her she was not Maria, the woman would not listen. Meanwhile, the people from the bar showed Tact a room with a piano for him to play. Tact got excited and started to tune the piano. A man who had performed with Ken once was sad as he was old now and unable to play anymore. Tact told him he was lucky he was alive because he would hear him play. He played, and everyone was in awe. Anna was taken aside by the woman's husband, who told her that Maria was their daughter who had passed away but lived on in his wife's head. While Cosette told the old woman how wonderful her sister was, and she also talked about Tact and his passion for music. The woman fell asleep, and the girls left the house. Worrying about tact, they rushed towards the car, but Cosette told Anna about his location. They entered the bar and heard him play beautifully. Everyone applauded after his performance and thanked him before they continued on their journey. In another scene, a girl informs Commander Sagan that the son of his master is alive and now is a conductor. He is overjoyed at this news, because he thought the child had also died with his father. He knows he will rise because he is a son of the rooster. Felix denied a request from a poor town and boasted about his position to hell when he was summoned by Lieutenant Sagan, who wished to speak with him. Sagan told Felix that he knew he wanted to arrest the protagonist and warned him not to lay a finger on him. 
Felix tried to say that Tact was using his power for his own benefit, but Sagan interrupted, stating that he was sure they would need his power. Felix started getting agitated and said he didn't need someone like that and that he could handle everything. But Sagan silenced him, stating he was useless. An angered Felix left the room and later went to the bathroom, vowing to get revenge on the protagonists. Tact, on the other hand, was unable to sleep and had dark circles under his eyes ever since he left the bar. He tapped his fingers on the window like it was a piano. In a scene change, the group hit the road and eventually got stopped by traffic. As the officer walked by, Anna asked what was happening, and the officer responded that lately, many Dietwoes had started attacking the city, causing heavy traffic as people wanted to leave. There was a sighting of a D2 near a mountain, which meant the lives of people stuck here were at risk. Cosette let the officer know that she was a music art and would eliminate any danger. They passed the traffic and headed to a hotel. As they left Tact in his hotel room he immediately started moving his fingers on the table. Anna got frustrated, and Cosette got near him and cracked his neck. Tact fell on the floor immobilized, and Cosette asked what had been on his mind. He looked her in the eye and felt the warmth and told them he had been composing a song. Anna felt as though she was back at his place and was happy for him. So, she decided to help him by asking the hotel management for him to play something. Tact was excited and thought it was a piano, but it was a small portable one called the melodica. The whole night was spent composing, and in the morning, suddenly his arm vanished. He went outside and saw Cosette returning after fighting some deep woes. Tact asked why she did not call him, and Destiny told him it was because his head was not in it. This way they had a fight, but he knew talking to her was useless, and she excused herself to carry on with her plans. Later, Tact tried to relax in the city and he remembered his dad saying that what is important is who you want to hear the song. But when he saw Cosette, he started following her and observed her helping a mother buy food for her child. He appeared to be good with the children as well. Anna arrived and asked if he was surprised by Cosette's actions. He asked how she found him, to which she said that she happened to find a shady stalker. Tact said yes, he was surprised to see her like that, and Anna explained that during their journey, Destiny had met many people and started developing feelings. She also told him that the melodica that she lent him was found by Cosette. She was trying to support him. She wondered if she still was Cosette underneath. The next day, the protagonist sits down to have coffee with Cosette, who was already eating her sugary meal. He asks her why Cosette and Anna were always doing things together but now they seem to be separated. She tells him that Anna stopped calling her Cosette, which surprises Tact. She asks what kind of person Cosette was before she died. He starts remembering the old Cosette and tells her not to ask that. In a scene change, we see many cops shooting at a D2, but it doesn't affect it. The D2 shoots a ray, easily knocking them down. Later, Destiny and Tact arrive and defeat the monster easily. They head to the forest to find more Dietwoes that are hidden to prevent further attacks on the city. Tact, who was pale from drained energy and insomnia, asks the concerned Cosette to focus on the task at hand. Suddenly, Destiny senses many Dietwoes gathered in one place. They go immediately but find Hell and Felix surrounded by Dietwoes. Tact is confused as he doesn't understand what's going on. Felix explains that this is Hell's power, attracting and awakening Dietwoes. She uses a tone that causes the Dietwoes to surrender to her. Tact realizes Felix has been attracting Dietwoes to many cities, intending to reduce the population, believing that useless people waste resources in the world. He proclaims himself a hero supporting the world from the shadows. He wanted to create an ideal world where only the chosen would be gathered. Tact says he's crazy. Felix reveals that he attracted the Dietwoes to destroy the city at the festival where Cosette died. That was the first time he used this power. Tact, furious, declares he'll kill Felix. But Felix, who had tremendous hate for Tact, wanted to get rid of him. Tact moves incredibly fast and is about to hit Felix, but Hell intercepts to protect him and strikes Tact. Felix is surprised by Tact's speed. He demands that Hell move away, but she seems to be enjoying the confrontation. Cosette tells Tact to calm down so they can think it through, but anger consumes him. Hell attacks again and injures Tact badly. Cosette carries Tact away from the scene. Felix asks Hell why she did not kill them right away, to which she replies that she wanted to have fun with them first. However, Felix is unsettled by the sudden change in Tact's demeanor. Anna tries to talk to the police to let her in but they refuse. She has a bad feeling about the situation. Then Lenny and Titan arrive on a motorcycle. Judging by Anna's expressions, Lenny knows he is late. Cosette takes the protagonist to a cave to recover, but he's bleeding heavily. Attempting to offer water, he can't drink, so she shares it mouth to mouth. 
his wounds became infected, leading to a high fever. During the night, Tak slightly improves and calls out to Cosette. She holds his hand, assuring him she won't leave. Meanwhile, Hell informs Felix about the nearby presence of Titan and Lenny, but Felix pays little attention. Hell starts to hum, but Felix stops her, expressing his disdain for music, declaring that once he rebuilds the world, music won't be allowed. Tact, upon waking, playfully comments on the bandages, questioning why Cosette fled the fight. She explains that seeing him vulnerable made her realize she might never hear him play the piano. Her actions were instinctive. She also mentions his unfinished song, and Tact admits he lacks someone to dedicate it to, feeling demotivated, subtly referring to Cosette. Tact opens up to Destiny about Cosette, sharing that she used to come to his house. Despite finding her annoying at times, especially after losing his father, the piano was his solace, and Cosette was always there, encouraging him that his music could touch others. Witnessing the festival showed him that people hadn't abandoned music but were waiting for someone to bring it back into their hearts. After Cosette's death at the festival, he struggled to compose as he used to. Destiny encourages him to finish the song, emphasizing his passion and the people eagerly awaiting his music. Anna confides in Lenny, learning that Commander Felix wants to eliminate Tact and Destiny. Lenny assures her of their strength, urging her not to run away from facing Destiny, even if she no longer goes by the name Cosette. Lenny emphasizes that he's there to support them. The next day, Cosette bids a tired Tact farewell, feeling guilty for draining his life force. She confronts Hell and Felix, asserting that she doesn't need a master to defeat them. Armed with an axe, she faces the formidable Hell, enduring continuous attacks. Tact wakes up, notices Destiny's absence, and sets out to find her. Hell grabs Destiny by the neck, demanding her submission. But Destiny remains resilient, expressing her desire for Tact to live a peaceful life playing the piano. As Hell is about to break Destiny's neck, Tact intervenes, and Lenny and Titan join the fray. Titan engages Hell in a matched battle. Tact assures Destiny that he found someone who would listen to his music, her. Feeling honored, Destiny is encouraged by Tact to use as much life force as needed. Lenny informs Felix that he's at a disadvantage now that Tact has recovered, and Destiny is transformed. Destiny attacks Hell, who laughs maniacally and doesn't mind the pain. Suddenly, both music arts ascend into the sky charging powerful attacks and simultaneously unleash giant beams. Hell loses the battle but remains eager to continue fighting. However, a girl named Heaven arrives and halts the combat. She informs Felix that she will report everything to the higher-ups, following Sagan's order. In clear disobedience, Felix is stripped of his commander position and the right to own a music heart. Hell disassociates from Felix and breaks her baton before leaving with Heaven. Lenny agrees to keep this information secret. Felix, still in shock, fails to grasp the severity of the situation, clinging to the belief that he is the most talented commander. The group ignores him and departs, meeting up with Anna, who recognizes Destiny by her name. Tact, in his heart, promises Cosette that he will move forward and complete the song. Lenny makes a call and receives the notification that Felix has been detained providing a sense of relief. Titan reassures him that she will protect everyone dear to him, and he expresses happiness before refocusing on their mission. Later, the group finally arrives in New York, shocked by the bustling and lively atmosphere. The numerous buildings and the modern city leave them amazed. Anna explains that New York is the only city that managed to defend the country's resources against the D2, explaining its relatively unchanged state. However, Tact reminds her that it is still incomplete without music. Anna reunites with her family, and they even hug Destiny. Once inside, Anna's older sister, Charlotte, informs them that she has the lab ready to examine Destiny. Destiny asks Charlotte if this experiment would prevent her from stealing her maestro's life force. They rush to the Symphonica headquarters, a cutting-edge building that left them in awe. Once at the lab, Destiny insisted that Tact should also undergo an examination. Anna, noticing Tact's reddening arm, realized Destiny had been consuming his life force during battles. Tact admitted to this, and Anna, saddened, wished he had told her. Tact explained it was his own doing, and there was nothing she could have done. Charlotte, during her thorough examination, noticed Destiny's question about Cosette's location in her. This question made her uneasy. After completing the tests, Charlotte delivered the news that they couldn't annul the pact between Destiny and Tact. She clarified that both needed a genetic disposition known as Alpha Youth for their awakening. Destiny, sustained by the life force she consumed, remained alive. Tact, as a conductor, received feedback from Destiny, enhancing his abilities for battles. Their current forms exist because they interfere with each other and consume one another. This is why they will not last long. 
However, Tak's arm infection is spreading, affecting other parts of his body. Charlotte advises them to stop getting involved in fights and live a peaceful life, warning that they'll die if they keep fighting. The following day, Destiny and Anna force Tact out of his room for a day of fun and shopping, visiting the aquarium and the park. Anna has an idea to leave Tact and Destiny alone in the park as she and Charlotte head home. Tact treats Destiny to more sweets, and they continue walking, stumbling upon a musician's memorial. Despite the city's absence of music, it was clearly well-loved. Tact, unaware that people were waiting for the return of music, felt hopeful. They also paid their respects to the artist. Meanwhile, Charlotte and Anna had a sisterly conversation about their time apart and the growth of both Destiny and Tact. Anna shared that Destiny is just like Cosette and their little sister. As Tact and Destiny sat in the park discussing their plans for a chance at a peaceful life, Tact expressed a desire to listen to the timbre of the orchestra again. Destiny, who could not perceive life yet, also wished to experience it. Tact promised that after they defeated all Deet Woes, they could fulfill this dream. As Tact and Destiny head back home, Destiny senses something strange. She hears the same tuning as Hells and fears that if they don't act, the Deet Woes will notice and react to it. Anna learns from the news about the increased sightings and destruction of Deet Woes in the city, awakening from their hibernation after four years. Lenny calls them, warning them that they are in danger, and informs Tact that someone is manipulating the Deet Woes to attack them. Tact, who already suspected that somebody was using Hell's tuning fork powers to control the Deet Woes, impresses Lenny. Lenny instructs Tact to leave New York with Anna's family to prevent further deaths. Tact insists on knowing the truth, asserting that he is also a part of them and does not want to stay in the audience but take action. Lenny bids his final goodbyes, but Tact persists, wanting to learn the truth about Symphonica and his father's death. Lenny agrees to share the truth and asks to meet the next day in a park. Lenny had the chance to hear Ken perform once, experiencing the light in music. Inspired, he aspired to be someone's light too but life took him down a different path. The next day, Destiny and Tact set out to meet Lenny. Just as Lenny is about to reveal everything, Sagan arrives, expressing a desire to learn the truth as well. They are all surprised to find the Grand Maestro among them, as Sagan had been looking forward to meeting Tact, the son of Ken. Lenny discloses that he extracted the truth from Felix and knows the reality. Tact pieces together that Sagan is behind the tuning. Lenny confirms Sagan's involvement. Hell and Heaven also appear. Sagan instructs Lenny to remain silent to maintain their friendship. But Lenny refuses, declaring Sagan their enemy, and things will worsen if they don't stop him. Tact and Destiny prepare for battle, and Hell quickly starts attacking them. Hell asks Sagan if she should hold back or go full assault mode this time. He tells her that if they continue to oppose him, they need to be eliminated. Heaven attempts to strike Titan, but Titan evades and readies her weapon. Lenny urges Tact to demonstrate the capabilities of a master and pupil, though Tact feels uneasy about being called a pupil. Sagan, however, discloses the truth about Lenny. We then delve into Lenny's history as an apprentice to Tact's father. Lenny greatly admired Ken and eventually became his disciple. Ken, a kind-hearted person, agreed to share his musical expertise, while Lenny offered his knowledge in return. Lenny, foreseeing the danger of hosting a concert that could attract D2 creatures, advised against it. However, Ken, determined to uplift people's spirits, refused to cancel the event. The scene shifts to the venue's destruction, where Lenny witnesses Tack trying to rescue his father from the debris. Lenny himself becomes trapped underneath the wreckage. Later, Lenny regains consciousness on a stretcher and encounters Sagan, who recognizes Lenny's potential as a conductor. Sagan, seeking vengeance for Ken's death and aspiring to eradicate all D2 creatures, persuades Lenny to join him. The following day, he is introduced to his music art, Titan. Lenny, usually somber, experienced a positive change upon meeting Titan, and their partnership brought smiles to his face. Together, they embarked on a journey to eliminate D2 creatures worldwide, and after Sagan's declaration four years ago, the Deet Woes entered a dormant state. Returning to the present, Destiny and Titan engage in a fierce battle against Hell and Heaven. The confrontation appears evenly matched. Tact vows to restore music and prepares for the impending fight. Unfortunately, Titan is injured due to a barrage of bullets. Destiny is left to face the two opponents alone. Tact senses his life force draining, and his injuries are spreading. Just as Destiny is about to unleash a powerful blast from her gun, she reverts to her original form and discovers Tact collapse nearby. Sagan instructs Heaven and Hell to finish the job, and they take aim at Tact and Destiny. 
However, just as Heaven is about to shoot Tact, Lenny intervenes, taking the shots himself. Lenny, gravely injured, musters his final strength for a powerful performance. Titan, too, transforms and launches a simultaneous attack. Lenny, aware of his impending demise, is determined to achieve victory. Meanwhile, Sagan experiences a sense of nirvana, finding pleasure in the convergence of pain and joy. In the climactic moment, Titan unleashes a tremendous blast aimed at Hell, but Heaven intercepts and suffers defeat. The turn of events prompts Sagan and Hell to retreat, with Sagan expressing anticipation for Tact's future performances. On the ground, Lenny is in a critical state, and Titan, overwhelmed with emotion, begins to cry. Tact and Destiny approach Lenny, who implores Tact to become a formidable music art like his father and advises against blaming himself. Lenny recalls the aftermath of the tragedy, where he sought forgiveness from a younger Tact, but instead vowed to create a world where the joy of music could thrive. Tact acknowledges that Lenny was a crucial part of him, serving as both his harmony and mentor. Eventually, Lenny passes away, entering a dream where he and Tact play together, joined by Ken, who congratulates them. In another scene, Charlotte reveals to Anna that she is working as quickly as possible on a cure for Tact and Destiny. Tact's condition is critical, and he may not last another month. Meanwhile, Sagan manipulates crystals, triggering an earthquake, and unleashes a horde of D2 creatures throughout the city. The Symphonica headquarters, where Anna and Charlotte were, is destroyed in the chaos. Tact wakes up, discovering the dire situation from the news. Concerned for Anna, he discusses the situation with Destiny. The music arts face the onslaught of D2 creatures. With Titan's assistance, Tact and Destiny reach the building where Anna and her sisters are. The sisters are trying to escape but are confronted by a D2 creature. Destiny and Titan engage the D2OS in the building, making their way toward the sisters. Titan advises Tact that, after finding the sisters, they should leave the building and avoid further combat. Considering their drained state from the previous day, Titan contemplates ending Sagan to avenge Lenny and quell the chaos, but Tact and Destiny are determined to help. As they fight their way through the D2 creatures, Tact's life force continues to drain, and he collapses under the strain. As Charlotte's wheelchair becomes a distraction, Anna decides to carry her. Just as a D2 is about to attack Anna, Walker arrives and defeats it. She attempts to clear the area for Anna and Charlotte's safe exit but the overwhelming number of D2 creatures makes it difficult for her to manage alone. After Tact wakes up, he urges them to keep moving forward. Titan and Destiny join the scene to assist Wakyur and the sisters. Together, they manage to defeat a giant D2 creature. Wakyur, after observing Tact's expression, asks what happened, but he avoids eye contact. Frustrated, she demands an explanation emphasizing her role as a music art of Symphonica. Tact instructs Titan to escort Anna, Charlotte, and Walker to safety, as he plans to confront Sagan and put an end to everything. Anna, furious with Tact for risking his life, argues that he was on the brink of death himself. However, Tact insists that he wants to protect music, and his wish won't come true if Sagan continues to live. He expresses gratitude to Anna for looking after them before heading off to face the impending danger. Anna kisses Tact, insisting that Destiny must bring him back safely, even if he's barely breathing, as Charlotte will find a solution. Destiny promises to bring him back. Later, Destiny and Tact head to the core, where they encounter numerous D2 creatures, including Hell carrying Heaven. Hell informs Heaven that it's time and she uses a magical blade to eliminate them both, allowing their merger into a single music art, now known as Orph. Orph attacks them with lightning and several other weapons. Although Tact and Destiny activate their powers, they struggle because Orph regenerates rapidly, and the weapons are more formidable than Destiny is accustomed to. They realize they need to coordinate their efforts to deliver a powerful, concentrated attack to take Orph out without giving her time to regenerate. Destiny fights relentlessly, but despite Tact's attempt to create an opening, Orpha's regeneration proves too quick. Destiny makes the difficult decision to face Orpha alone and urges Tact to stop Sagan. Tact agrees and moves forward. We learn about Sagan's past in the army, fighting against the D2 when they first arrived, witnessing the chaos and loss of friends, which changed something within Sagan. He was always on the front lines. One day, as he witnessed the horrifying destruction caused by the Deet Woes, he came across a crystal from which the Deet Woes emerged. Upon touching it, he knew what he had to do. 
contact reaches Sagan and informs him that he has come to end all this. Sagan requests a moment to chat, expressing his deep love for the world. Meanwhile, Destiny is engaged in a fierce battle with Orf. Despite easily being beaten down, Destiny stands tall, revealing that she, too, has been listening to Sagan's words. Orf, angered by Destiny's response, claims that Sagan is facing the pain head-on and is the only brave one, unlike others who run away. Their swords clash, and the intense battle takes a toll on Tact, causing his hair to turn white. Sagan reveals his plan to seal all D2 by sacrificing himself along with the city's inhabitants, aiming to end the suffering for the next generation. He explains his motive, expressing a desire to spare future generations from this hellish existence. Sagan was in love with the idea of sacrifice and its glory. He tells Tak that it's his time for the last performance. Meanwhile, Orf pins Destiny down as she attempts to kill her. Destiny intercepts the sword, and a fierce battle ensues. Despite initially losing, Destiny gains strength from Tak's trust in her and remembers his struggles. This newfound determination allows her to finally win the fight against Orf. As the corruption consumes Orf, Destiny finishes her. Tak tells Sagan that music is what will save them, it's their hope and happiness. Using Destiny's weapon, Tak kills Sagan, causing the crystals in the city to shatter. Tak and Destiny lie by the seashore, engaging in a conversation. Tak hums the song he had been working on. Destiny thought he had given up ever since they came to New York. Even though he had the melody in mind, he still needed to give it a shape, as suggested by Destiny, who was born from music. Eventually, Tak decides to rest, confident that others will come to save them. He passes away, and Destiny, grief-stricken, kisses him, expressing her love before fading away. Anna and Charlotte find an unconscious Tact with Destiny's pendant in his hand. They try to provide him with first aid. After a few months, we see people rebuilding the city, and the sisters work together. Anna has also joined Symphonica. She wants to do everything, so Tact recovers and plays the music again. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.